Woo! Just like that. 100 episodes. Now, I can wish I could tell you I had the foresight or we had the foresight to look at this episode 100 and plan for it and do a special celebratory episode, but no, we just noticed right now that it was 100. Time flies when you're having so much fun. I can't believe looking back at the last, uh, well, two and a half years of doing this podcast that we're already at episode 100. It just like every time we blink, it's another episode, another episode. It was, uh, yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun to do this episode today, but just to look back on where things started, if you ever, if you followed us from the first episode, the 20th, the 50th, the 75th, and so forth, there's been a lot of evolution, different types of guests, different conversations, but we've kept our conversations always hyper-focused on how to educate you guys, uh, keep you informed, obviously, of what's happening in the marketplace, give you our opinions, bring on inspiring guests, and be transparent. One of the things I noticed and listen to a lot of podcasts, and I'm a huge podcast listener myself, is that it's often really, really hard to get through the noise or break through the noise and get to the good stuff, get out of the fluff. And that's something that we hate all of us. So we always try to keep our focus on giving you guys good information, real advice, whether or not it helps us as a business owner or advisor to clients or acquire more clients is one thing. But at the end of the day, we know we're doing a service to our community of real estate agents um, and of course, clients across the country. With that all being said, you know, some of the juice that gets us really going and continues is the reviews, the feedback, the messages, the communication, the clients that come and, and talk to us because of the podcast and the information that we're providing them. Um, it's such an awesome feeling. So I want to thank you if you're listening to this episode 100 and say, we appreciate you so, so, so much. You don't even know. Um, you know, the, the amount of time and energy we put into this is, is wild, but <laughs> it's hard to tell when you're listening to an episode, when you're driving or working out. Anyways, one of the things that we love is when we get these reviews, um, on iTunes too, because it, you know, it's people giving us their real thoughts unsolicited. Although we do like to thank people with a, a cup of coffee and uh, a thrive mug. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of neat to read it. So I'm going to read today's five-star review, which just showed up here a couple days ago. Um, and it says best start, best podcast, start learning about real estate. Yeah, absolutely love this podcast. Someone who's looking to buy their first property in the next couple of years. I think it's crucial for me to understand ins and outs of financing real estate. And there's so many perspectives, tips, tricks I'm picking up. And I feel like I'm letting on, on the insider's top secrets. Thank you so much, Alex and the team. Hey, I appreciate you from Derek, Dean, and I. Thanks so much for leaving that review. And that's the kind of feedback we want. Build trust based on giving information. So with that all being said, today's guest is going to be a fun one. We are having him come back for the second time on this podcast. And for all you hockey fans out there, you're going to recognize the name. But you're going to recognize him realistically for a completely different reason. Uh, I met Eddie uh, about two years ago through social media. Funny enough, uh, we connected and we actually started having really good conversations and asked him to come on the podcast, talk a little bit about real estate, getting started, what that was like. Well, he's had a lot of experience. He's grown his business massively, as you'll hear about on the podcast, and he's become a little bit of an expert in his own right when it comes to Airbnbs, short-term rentals, and uh, investing in Arizona, in the States. So pretty cool to have him come back on the show, talk a little bit about his experience, what he's seeing now, and more importantly, where some of the opportunities are. So as always, listening to this episode right now is presented by our company, our team here at Thrive Mortgage Co. Officially coined the number one mortgage team in Canada at DLC in 2021. Thank you all of you guys. And of course, uh, we hope you enjoy the episode. See you on the other side. What's up, guys? You are listening to the YBR Remo Show, where we talk all things Vancouver real estate and mortgages, take boring topics, and make them interesting. Make sure to stay tuned to listen to everything you need to know how to put cash back in your pocket, create wealth in real estate, and simplify the complicated. Well, let's get back into it, guys. I'm super pumped, and uh, well, I'm always excited to talk to this guy, our good little friend down there, or big friend, I don't know how big you are, but a <laughs> good friend down in uh, Arizona, Scottsdale to be specific. Welcome back, uh, Mr. Eddie Lack. It's been a minute, buddy. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Thanks for having me, Alex. Yeah, I mean, aside from you making fun of my sweater, I'm doing all right. So, <laughs> good way to start the show. Yeah, no, I'm doing awesome, man. And uh, really cool to to have you back on. Almost a year and a half later, it's insane to see how much has evolved and changed uh, in both of our careers and and business and real estate in like in a year and a half. Nuts. Uh, mind blowing, actually, and um, pumped to talk a little bit about some real estate today. So, uh, before we go too deep, um, you know, obviously, some exciting changes in your business. Uh, you got a new partner, 
you switch brokerages. So the, the name of the company is Lack and Long, right? Yes, correct. Love me, it. Love. Me. So it's uh, Eddie Lack and Connor Long. So yeah. Wicked. Yeah. And you said a lot of good things about Connor. So I'm excited to meet him. They're all sometime lies. Soon. They're, They're all, all lies. lies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Eddie. It's all about Eddie. Uh, wicked. And uh, so you guys crushed it last year, uh, $45 million closed. You said you just sold four homes, closed on four homes today, January 13th. Unreal, man. Congrats. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Like it's kind of what you said. It's just the last year has been amazing and, and, and made, made uh, so many meaningful connections and met amazing pe people along the way. And, and, and yeah, I mean, we're just going up from here. So yeah, exciting times. Awesome, man. Well, I'm excited to hear all about what, what you guys are doing down there. Um, hey, uh, with that being said, I mean, the big reason that we wanted to have you come on today, aside from, uh, you know, showing your beautiful face is uh, talking a little bit about, you know, what's happened in the market, talk a little bit about your, your investment experience, why is Scottsdale a big thing and so forth. But I mean, I think, uh, you know, before I even get into all that stuff, man, I always want to hear a little bit about from your perspective, you know, what, uh, what are you seeing uh, just as the U.S. climate is concerned in real estate? Because I feel like you guys are six to 12 months ahead of us. Like, where is the market right now uh, as a whole? How are people feeling about it? Is it, is it still crazy and a fever or is it slowed down a bit from 2021? 20, uh, where are you guys at right now? It's still crazy. I mean, we haven't seen really any signs of slowing down whatsoever. Uh, I think there's talks about uh, the interest rates going up a little bit here. So, so, so uh, that might scare a few buyers off. But, but yeah, I mean, if you want to jump into it, we have Scott, Scott, Scottsdale, right? And, and, uh, uh, Phoenix in general, we just have so many people moving here right now. And, and, uh, uh I just saw, uh, a stat. I don't know if we were number one or, or two with, uh, relocations from other States. I mean, we had night over 90,000 people move, moving here from, uh, other States lat, lat, last year alone. So yeah, it's, it's still, uh, super super hot <laughs> how have you seen like the price point like from where you know where you started a year and a half ago to where it is today have you seen a huge increase in appreciation amongst all this busy activity for a comparison like we bought our airbnbs like a year and a half two years ago here we bought them in the low fours high fours and now the same properties go for like seven, eight hundred grand, right? It's just nuts. So yeah, we're we're still seeing and like all of the projected numbers and everything still still says that that uh, that uh, the market is going to go up uh, double digits in appreciation the next year here. So yeah, <laughs> crazy man. Well, I was just uh, uh, speaking of appreciation. I was just talking to an agent earlier today, and I asked him to send us numbers from where we live, just outside of Vancouver. And across the board, it was up thirty-five. So, th well, condos were thirty percent, houses were up forty percent, townhomes up forty percent. So, I, if it's anything like that, there, I mean, obviously, it's going to be another big year. But you mentioned it's funny that you mentioned interest rates, and I know you're not obviously a uh, mortgage banker or broker down there, but you probably got your your you know ears out there to the ground like have there been any big changes in rates in the last year and if so has it changed what people are doing not so much in the last year but we have seen in the last uh, few weeks here that it's starting to creep up a little bit things are really starting to like change a little bit and uh, from what i'm hearing from my le lenders and everything saying that by april may there is going to be a big hike that that uh down here in the interest rates and 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 yeah they're gonna go up a lot interesting yeah so i mean with that being said we're talking we're hearing a lot of talk about that in canada too rates potentially going up it could happen in canada it's a little bit unique because you have to qualify for a rate that's way higher than you have so it's unlikely that would really make a difference in what people can qualify for but i guess like let's talk about arizona and scottsdale to be specific and go back to that for a minute what like yeah. you mentioned ninety thousand people moving to scottsdale man like 
explain to us why do you have any idea i mean you don't know everything around it but like what are people telling you why are they moving there what type of people are moving there there's always people that come here and like spend a lengthy amount of time here it might be like five or six or seven seven days they always say i didn't expect it to be this nice here and like i didn't expect uh, it to be so many things to do and 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 uh i just think that a lot of people are getting tired of the weather in other states a lot of people are getting tired of uh po politics in in uh, other states i mean the last month, month and a half here, we just had a surge of Canadian clients that like see the sea that were fa fairly o open here, and we don't really have restrictions whatsoever, right? And 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 they're kind of get getting tired of all of the restrictions up north, so they're like, we want to at least start with buying uh, a rental property down down with you and then we'll see we see we might actually uh relocate eventually i have three three clients right now that, right now that we're just we're working on uh relocating down here so interesting so obviously lifestyle where people are going you got a lot of people moving down there and that's actually a perfect segue into what what are people doing when they're getting there because obviously you know, not everybody can buy a house when they move to Scottsdale, but you know, there's probably a lot of people who are interested in doing so. So you mentioned a lot of Canadians coming down to buy investment properties or rental properties. And, you know, when we first spoke and we did our first podcast, you mentioned that you had done a few Airbnbs yourself. What, like, I guess I just really want to know, like, what is appealing from an investment perspective, aside from the value increase of Scottsdale, Arizona? Like, why, why are people investing and buying rentals in that area, aside from the lifestyle and, and the appreciation? I just think that it's a great ROI, and 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 uh, we have so many people that are just visiting here for the lifestyle too. It's people that want to get get away for a weekend, and and uh, they golf, or we get a ton of the bachelor and bat bat bachelorette parties that want to party in Old Town, and 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 go to all the right. The nice restaurants and everything, right? So, uh, from from uh, uh, strictly an investor standpoint, I just think it's uh, the ROI. I mean, it made a ton more sense when I bought mine like a year and a half, two 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 years ago. I kind of feel like it is starting to become a little bit oversaturated here and 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 uh, we're kind of at a tipping point i feel like where the airbnb still makes sense at this price but if these seven eight hundred thousand pro dollar pro properties go up another uh 150 grand i mean then then from an investment stand standpoint then it's just kind of speculating that you're hoping that that the the appreciation is going to come right that's a good point i mean i i'm i'm experienced with a, an airbnb here in vancouver and i like it because it, it's there it's close by and and the fear from a canadian like myself is it's out of town it's out of sight it's out of mind who's managing it who you know like just from my personal experience move in move outs every week right there's a lot of activity and, and if i didn't have the professionals to support me it, it, it wouldn't be ha it wouldn't be happening because i just don't have the capacity with my business to do that right so yeah. when you set up a canadian that's you know eager to get into this market have an airbnb are you putting the whole package of professionals together the cleaners the you know the the managers all those sorts of things is that something you help them with or is it or, or how, what does that look like when i describe our business i describe us as 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 like a full on management real estate like we have everything right and and it's kind of like a one stop 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 shop i mean uh, we help you buy it we have the management company if you need need to do remodels we have a ton of clients that we're doing remodels for now with my co contractor here uh, we have a girl that helps us furnish the places i mean 
pool guys, everything. I mean, oh. anything that you can think think about, like like we have that connection, right? That's huge. I I, I underestimated furnishing my Airbnb. That was uh, I. Really oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you know, the right. amount of boxes and the the work, like the it was so much work, right? And um, so like just to have that support, even just from furnishing, it's like seems like oh, I'll furnish the place. That's easy to do, but it's not. <laughs> no, exactly. And like. It, the first ones that I did with my wife and everything, and like it's it it's some uh, West Dom stuff, but then then you go to the Wayfair and the IKEA and everything. Like everything is just screwing together, <laughs> right? Like yeah. your your freaking hands are bleeding by like yeah. the end. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. It's a lot nicer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I wouldn't be doing that again. <laughs> well, let's be honest here. We're not all design oriented either, right? Like, God, my house would just be white walls everywhere. I had no idea how to do that stuff. So so that's pretty cool. You got the whole meal deal, you got the whole package put together. People come in there, you're finding the property, you're doing fix and flips. You, you know, as you mentioned before, I mean, uh, let's talk a little bit about that from a, a dollars and cents perspective. I mean, you, you actually sent me a couple performers the other day, but maybe just speak frankly without getting into the weeds of the numbers. Like if a client is buying a house today at that 700 range that you mentioned and they're putting in the furniture and rentals and stuff like that, what are they, what are they netting every month after their expenses? What are you seeing right now? It's very different from month to month here, right? Like, like January through uh may a little bit of june those are 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 extremely busy months here and though though those months like march you can probably net uh like 10 grand and uh the waste management open is going on in february so you can net like five grand for that weekend alone so so it it uh, fluctuates a lot uh, we still have a really good occupancy during the summers which is extremely hot here right but uh, our prices just just drop a lot so uh, i always like to think about it on a year as a whole so you probably net uh, when mortgage and everything is paid for, all the bills, all the property management fees. You're netting around like forty, fifty thousand a year for those properties. I, I spend a lot of time down there, so I know the landscape, I know the locations, and and the areas that I find like the tourists, like myself, seem to attract to is obviously the old town Scottsdale area, and then for me, I like the North Scottsdale area with family, with kids, you know, yep. golfing, that sort of thing. Those are kind of like the two areas I feel like everyone just kind of knows, like this is where you go. Outside of that, is, is there other parts of, of Arizona, like near those those locations that you would recommend for specifically Airbnb tourists? I wouldn't call it another area, but like when we first start, started buying, like, like the rule of thumb was you have to be north of Thomas, which is a road here, right? And like nothing south, south, south of Thomas, like that's more uh the houses are all 50 60 years old and it's not really working now down down there like like now two years later it's like 30 40 percent of those houses there are all uh renovated so we've just like creeped more and more south here but it's still old town area and uh what i like about those two is it is your your smack in the middle between scottsdale and tempe which is our huge college town where asu is right so so uh those ones are doing really really well uh right now as well and then guys like i hear about peoria and mesa and 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 all of these places that are doing great, I just don't know anything about it, all, 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 honestly. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm so specific with with the Scottsdale, and I know my numbers, and I know like all the streets and all the areas and everything. So uh, my my uh, par partner Connor, uh, he is really good with Mesa because he lives there. Right. So, 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 uh, but it's that, that 
de- definitely not my my uh, uh, cup of tea. <laughs> Cruising through town, it is a lot of older construction. It's not brand new construction, right? And like with so much, the ninety thousand people come into the state or the, the the area in in last year. I can only imagine that's going to be higher this year. Where are these people going? Like, is there new construction? Are there new developments happening in in Scottsdale area? There is, but but like not close to fast enough, right? Yeah. And we don't really have that much more area to build. Everything is getting pu- pushed north to Desert Mountain and everything, but uh, we're getting really close to the mountains there as well. So like there's there there's not really uh, that much more space to build in the valley valley now. So. Uh, I ask myself that question every single single day. Where are all these pe- people going? But uh, I think a lot of them are just moving out on uh, the west side, like like uh, Peoria and Verado, and 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 uh, they they just got so much bang uh, for 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 their buck when they sold their house here in Scottsdale. So they just move a lot more west and they just cash a house out there instead same sort of thing happened out here too like uh exact same idea people moving up to the valley moving different areas and i think that's probably where you know part of the conversation shifts to like okay well does that continue to keep scottsdale more in demand or are people just going to start to look for different cities or communities in the area um have you heard a lot of feedback around that or do you think scottsdale is going to remain like the hub and that's going to just be increased in value because of lack of supply I think it's just like everyone that calls me about moving here, like no one's saying Phoenix, no one's saying Mesa, no one's saying Gilbert or Chandler. Like, like they always say, I want to live in Scottsdale. And, 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 uh, I just think that Scott, like this little area that we have with Scottsdale, Paradise Valley and Arcadia, it is like, this is just a hub and like this is where everyone wants to live touching a little bit on your situation i want to go back to that for a quick second because i don't i mean i don't want to center this all around particularly the the airbnb model but you've got a couple of your own and you know from an experiential standpoint would you suggest that there still is a fair amount of opportunity for people to get in or do you see in the next year to be so saturated because so many people are trying to do the exact same thing that's been a constant thought of mine if everybody's going in and buying these airbnbs and one up in each other does that mean that you know if you bought an airbnb two years ago or three years ago it's completely outdated and it's going to cost you a fortune to redo it like what, what's that look like i think that we have another year left before the prices have gone up so much that it's really not worth it anymore uh, and i mean it all depends what you're looking for uh, a lot of people are looking for uh, the multifamily with like a five, six, six, five, six percent cap. I mean, uh, if you can buy an Airbnb with a five cap, or, or uh, sorry, if you can buy a multifamily with a five cap, or you can buy an Airbnb that for the same three million that gives you fifteen percent return of your money. I mean, why wouldn't you go that route instead? So uh, I I I still think that that uh, there's opportunity, but I think probably within the next year it's mostly gonna be scooped up by these big companies and everything that 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 is kind of gonna push out the the uh, everyday person that was just looking for one or two uh, rentals to get a little bit more income, right? And that's kind of what Airbnb was made for, right? So 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 uh, that that stuff is gonna be a little sad when or if it's gonna happen, right? But 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 yeah, that's that's where we're going now i think that the opportunity still is is to buy something and do a value improve on it so like you're you're uh, renovating the inside or you're adding a pool to it or uh, something like that i still think that you can get decent places in like the the 
five hundreds and put like 200 grand into it right and then post renovation value is probably going to be like 850 900 right so so uh, that's kind of where i still see the opportunity to just do a value add of some some, some kind in regards to Airbnb, I know we've seen some significant changes in city of Vancouver specifically with licensing and requirements. And we've seen almost, you know, every building now decline Airbnb. So people have went down there, purchased a property for the purpose of Airbnb, and now they can't do it do you, just because of government demands and changes and whatnot. Do you yeah. like, how is the government looking at like Airbnb with, when it comes to a license and just how many you can own? Is there any restrictions there? And is, and if not, is there any fear that some restrictions could come into play? There is no re- restrictions now. Uh, they are trying to kind of keep an eye on and make restrictions around like how many people can stay at an Airbnb. Uh, they're really just trying to get away from the big parties because uh, that's what all the neighbors complain at. That that that's what they hate, right? So, uh, but there's no restrictions. I think if 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 there is going to be restrictions eventually, it's more going to be against these bigger companies that buy like hundreds, two hundred of these, right? Uh, I don't really think that 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 uh, they are gonna go after the everyday guy because they also know how much revenue these airbnbs bring into city of scottsdale right so 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 uh, the hotels are all fully booked for like the spring and everything so like people are gonna have to stay somewhere so uh i really think that they are trying to kind of find some middle ground with like limiting how many one person can have, but we're not there yet. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And and to Dean's point, I mean, the reason we brought that up is like you said, there's been so many cities locally where it's like people go in there, they buy these short-term rentals and then six months later, there's restrictions and rules and you can't do this and you can't do that. So obviously then you can get shut down. So I, actually that's, that's a good segue into the whole long-term aspect. Is there anybody buying investment properties in Scottsdale outside of multifamily for the purposes of long-term rentals? Does it even make sense to do that or do they go to different cities altogether? It makes to- total sense. I mean, I always say that uh, Airbnb is like it's like your race car and the long-term rental is like your Volvo, right? <laughs> so uh, it's... it's uh, it's it doesn't bring as much income but it's a nice steady cash flow and and i mean rents have gone up so much in the last year here as well so uh yeah i mean long-term rentals make a total sense as well yeah it would be good to dig into that to understand that that component as well because again if uh if the short terms of the airbnb stopped working out in that area or they got you know cut out what would that look like for somebody transitioning into that right i mean i would just move mine into a long-term tenant instead and 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 yeah i mean that that that's probably what a lot of people are going to do just from a personal perspective i'd love to know just at least in your experience in the last year, I love to hear about screw ups, like things that went completely sideways. I'm putting you on the spot right now, but I mean, theoretically, you know, whether it be your career or not theoretically in reality, whether it be your career or just reality, when you were looking to buy or get involved with one of these properties, be it investment or not, has there anything that's happened to you in the last year, year and a half that was just like, Oh my God, smacked you in the face was a complete surprise that you can think about. We actually close on one today which has been like the hardest escrow of my life and like i don't ever want to do it again but 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 it was a really big uh, sale and uh, we were all good we my buyer so i represented the buyer we we had all the docs in we had all of the the money was in there we were waiting to close three and a half weeks ago and and i get a call from the listing agent so his buyer apparently uh, when he 
purchased this property two years ago he he checked the box with title that he was married uh, and 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 since then he he's just saying that he checked the wrong box uh, and that it was a mistake but we found out that he got married on a beach in Jordan to some chick and and uh, to to be able to close this property we needed to find her right <laughs> And, oh and he was refusing to give any information whatsoever about like where where she was, what her phone number was, yada yada yada. So, like, we thought the deal was dead. Uh, I I reached out to the old title company that that closed the, the transaction when he bought the house. And and they had all of her information. They they had email address, they had phone numbers and everything. So I reached out to her. I I get a hold of her brother-in-law, which she lives with, funny enough, in Canada right now. So all she wants from this guy is like a a a visa so she can stay in canada <laughs> oh <laughs> they have a child together too and 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 oh. like he he doesn't acknowledge anything right so uh, me calling and get a hold of them was kind of like a really nice surprise for them because i was able to to uh, negotiate a little bit of a check for her at the end when we close today for her to sign the quit claim deed to close the property to him as single and then to transfer it to my client so 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 like it's been a nightmare transaction i never thought that it was going to close like never and and uh, somehow i was just like grinding and i was grinding with the listing agent and we just got it done at the end but if you ask me if i would put put an offer on this house for my client knowing that all of this would have happened like like i would just walk but uh, <laughs> i was just stubborn and i got it done, so. I, just took curiosity not to go too far down that but is there any way that you would have been able to figure that out ahead of time or is that just like random uh, event everything just happened like to screw us up so <laughs> when he purchased the property he checked the box married and she was about to sign for that property as well but it was right when COVID happened and and she was in uh iran or some something and the embassies were closed they couldn't get a note notary to her to sign or anything so they just clo closed on it and 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 said we're closing on it now you have to get the sign from her and he never did <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy to, i can't imagine that happening here but uh, i've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> go team eddie lack oh my god <laughs> calling people from iran and jordan that's wild man um dude that's awesome well, I mean, aside from that, buddy, so it sounds like you're living the life. You've been busy as all heck the last year. You guys are closing deal after deal, calling people in other countries, making stuff happen. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, after this cast, we'll probably have a whack load of people reaching out to us and finding out how they can buy, uh, be your neighbor and buy their, uh, their next investment property down there. So let me ask you a couple questions. Somebody reaches out yeah. to you from somebody reaches out to you locally or they get referred down to you. What are you doing, man? Like, what are your next steps? What should somebody be prepared to do? The first step that I always want before I start working with people is a prequal or a proof of funds, right? That's, that, that, that's kind of like your, your, ticket to just start the search and like start looking at properties and everything because i just don't want to go through all of the work and everything and then it turn, turns out uh, you can afford, afford it right so uh, that is the first step and then uh, depending on if the person is lo local or if it's canada then 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 we kind of start looking at 
what you want and what the price range and what you're pre-qualified for and what you want. Do you want an investment pro- property? Do, do you want to uh, live here uh, six months out of the year? Like, like uh, it all kind of just like depends on 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 uh, the situation, and from there we just zoom in on. Uh, different areas and i just start sending pro- properties and 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 uh, uh, kind of see like what type of style you want and what type of house you want you want a pool and yada 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 right so so uh, that's kind of like the fun stuff about it it's just like fi- fi- finding the right pro- property for the right person right awesome man well Say, realistically, same thing as here. Then basically, just doing it virtually from our side. I love the yeah. I love the first thing you said. Get your money sorted out. Proof of funds. Proof of yeah. funds. You know how many horror stories we hear? Like we get a phone call last minute from somebody saying, "I thought I was qualified by my bank, but I wasn't, and now I can't close. I need your help." Right? Like all the time. Yeah. Glad that you're on top of that. So guys, listen up. Get your ducks in a row. Talk to us first, and then we'll hook you up with Mr. Eddie. We'll find a way to. To get you buying your Scottsdale dream property so you can go down float in the pool and drink margaritas all day long, right? Yes, sir. Or hit up the golf course. Because you can golf there all year round, can't you? Yeah, I know. But I have a da- da- daughter now and I work a lot. So <laughs> it, I really I really only get out like once once every two weeks, I would say. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been stuck under snow and rain for the past three months. So you're doing okay. You're doing okay. okay. Yeah, but that's by choice. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, any? Are there any other closing thoughts? And and actually, I got I, one more question before I ask you for a yeah. closing thought. I always want to. I think about this, and I want to know this because you're in the real estate space. So I want to hear. Uh, tell us, uh, Eddie, what are your big goals for this year for real estate? Do you have any big goals that we can help you achieve, or anybody else that's out here? Are you trying to do something specific that you want to tell the world about? Me and Connor, we did forty five million last 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 year, and we're gonna aim for for. 100 million this year so uh, we we have a lot of fun stuff in the pi- pipeline here and yeah we're just uh, working away and seeing where where we're gonna end up i love it i love it all right well we're gonna try and help you get there hopefully get some people up here that are interested in chatting with you and buying that uh yeah. next property down there and making some magic happen from everything i can tell eddie and connor the real deal they're uh they're offering a like a, a realistically like a luxury lifestyle these guys are gonna wine and dine you and give you so much so many tacos, you're going to have to buy a house. So Wine yeah, and I, dine. We take clients out for golf all, all the time. Like, yeah, like it's, it's, it, it's, if you come down here to buy a house with us, it, it's a full experience. So, all right. <laughs> I'm convinced. There we go. We got two of you on board. Awesome, buddy. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you, Eddie. Uh, we'll make sure to put your information in the show notes, man. And uh, till next time, my friend, let's hit that 100 million. Talk to you soon, boys. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.